Welcome to my channel. I am going to walk you through the process of valuing three utility stocks and analyzing their financial ratios. Comment if you have questions. I respond to every comment. Subscribe if you want to see me value more companies. The first company we're going to look at is AES. This is one of the world's leading power companies, generating and distributing electric power in 15 countries. Let's get started with the model. They have a market cap of $12 billion, so they're a large cap company. And they're trading at $17.95 a share. And to get the shares outstanding, that's market cap divided by stock price gives you shares outstanding, $669 million. We're going to need this number later when we calculate the value of the company. Let's look at the financials. To value a company, you have to estimate the future free cash flows and discount that number back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video today. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. It's how much money you have left over after paying for property, plan, and equipment and running your business. So they do have positive free cash flow every year, but it's declining, which isn't great to see, but they could be investing in their business. Their net income is negative in two of the four years. It's good they have positive free cash flow, but when you have negative net income, it could be non-cash expenses going through, or they could be borrowing a lot on credit. Their revenue looks pretty weak because it's declining each year. You generally want to see an upward trend. Let's look at the capital structure. They have $20 billion of debt. They pay 5.2% interest on their debt. And the cost of debt is 3.4%. To get cost of debt, it's interest rate times 1 minus the effective tax rate. And they're pretty leveraged. 87% of their capital structure is debt which means 13% is equity. To get the cost of equity, we need the beta. That's how volatile the stock is relative to the market. The market as a whole has a beta of one. So this stock pretty much moves with the market. Their cost of equity is 10.23%, and we figure that out using the capital asset pricing model. And their WAC is 4.26%, which is a blend of the cost of debt and cost of equity. And that's a discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated a terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four, that's $8.4 billion. We discounted these numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $8.4 billion. We divide that by 669 million shares, and we get a calculated stock price of $12.58. They're trading at $17.95, so they're trading at a 43% premium, so it's a sell according to the model. Let's see what Simply Wall Street says. They're saying $30, so they're in the other direction. They're saying the stock is undervalued. My model takes into account debt, and it gives a discount to the future cash flows based on how much debt a company has. Since they have so much debt, I think that's why I'm coming below their trading price and simply Wall Street's above. Let's see where the stock has been trading in the past few years. So it looks like it peaked right before coronavirus. Then it's come down quite a bit, but it's almost come way back up to where it was before. There could be a little more room for this stock to grow. Depends how you feel the future of the industry and this company is going to be. Let's look at the financial ratios. A bad PE, the median in the entire market is 15. The average is 23. A good price of sales of 1.2. The median is 1.8. The average is 5.2. A decent price to book of 4.0. The median in the entire market is 2.4. The average is 5.4. Price to earnings is stock price over earnings per share. To calculate earnings per share, that's net income over shares outstanding. I like to see below 15. There are 39.6. So investors are paying $39.60 for $1 of earnings. Price of sales is stock price over sales per share. To calculate sales per share, that's revenue over shares outstanding. I like to see below 2.5, they're at 1.2. So investors are paying $1.20 for $1 of revenue. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. 
to calculate book value for a share that's equity over shares outstanding. I like to see below 3.5, they're at 4.0. So investors are paying $4 for $1 book value. Current ratio is a little low, ROE is weak, and they have a good interest coverage ratio. Current ratio is current assets over current liabilities, so they can cover their current liabilities, but just barely. I like to see between 1.2 and 2, they're at 1.0. ROE is net income over equity. I like to see above 20%, they're at 10%. Interest coverage ratio is EBIT over interest expense. I like to see above 2.0, they're at 2.1. The best way to look at ratios is to compare them to similar companies. I've done videos on Canadian Utilities and Dominion Energy, both in the same industry as AES. And AES, if they have a number in red, they're worse than the average. If they're in green, they're better than the average. So they're worse in PE. They do have the best price to sales ratio of the three companies. They're worse in price to book and current ratio. They are a little better than average in ROE at 10%. The average is 9%, so the whole industry is pretty low in ROE. They have the most debt by far of all the companies. In terms of market cap, they're in the middle at $12 billion. They do pay an okay dividend yield of 3.22%, but that's the lowest in the industry. To summarize, I have them trading at a 43% premium, and the ratios look pretty weak, especially compared to their competitors. And the dividend yield is okay, but it's the lowest in the industry. The second company is Dominion. This company supplies electricity in Virginia, North Carolina, and South Carolina. It also supplies natural gas to Utah, West Virginia, Ohio, Pennsylvania, North Carolina, South Carolina, and Georgia. Dominion has generation facilities in Indiana, Illinois, Connecticut, and Rhode Island. Let's get started with the model. This is a really big company, 67 billion market cap. It's a large cap company, and they're trading at almost $81 a share. They have 827 million shares outstanding. Let's look at their financials. They have negative free cash flow in two years, and those same two years they had pretty high net income. So it looks like they could be selling a lot of product on credit, or they could be spending a lot to grow their business. They do have positive free cash flow in 2018 and 19, but their net income looks fairly steady from year to year, although it does drop in 2019. Their revenue is growing each year, which is a good sign. Let's look at a capital structure, $38 billion of debt. They pay 4.7% interest on the debt. The cost of debt is 3.7%, and they have 54% debt in that capital structure. That means they have 46% equity. And their beta is 0.38, that's a really low beta. So the stock moves one third of what the market moves. So if the market goes up 3%, this stock should go up 1%. If the market goes down 3%, this stock should go down 1%. Their cost of equity is 5.24%. So their WAC is 4.4%, which is a blend of the cost of debt and cost of equity. And that's a discount rate we're gonna to apply to the future cash flows. So we estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated terminal value, which is all cash flows past year of four, that's 83 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $75 billion. We divide that by 827 million shares. We get a calculated stock price at $90. They're trading at $81, so they're trading at a 10% discount. So it's a buy according to the model. Let's see what simply Wall Street says they're saying 119, so they're saying the stock is 32% undervalued. Let's see what the stock has been trading at the past few years. So it looks like it's been pretty steady for a while. It hasn't really moved too much. It did dip a little here and there, but it's pretty steady for the past five years. Let's look at the financial ratios. Really bad PE, weak price to sales, and a good price to book. PE is stock price over earnings per share. I like to see below 15, there are 49. Price of sales is stock price over sales per share. I like to see below 2.5, there are 4.0. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. I like to see below 3.5, there are 2.1. Weak current ratio, weak ROE, and a good interest coverage ratio. Current ratio is current assets over current liabilities, so they cannot cover their current liabilities, which means they may need to take on more debt. ROE is net income over equity. I like to see above 20%. They're only at 4%.
Interest cards ratio is EBIT over interest expense. I like to see above two, they're at 2.2. The best way to look at ratios is to compare them to similar companies. I've done videos on AES and Canadian Utilities, both in the same industry as Dominion. If Dominion has a number in red, they're worse than the average. If they're in green, they're better than the average. They're worse in price to earnings, price to sales. They are better in price to book. They're the worst in current ratio, the worst in ROE, but they have the lowest amount of debt and they're by far the biggest company at 67 billion market cap. And they do pay a dividend similar to the average in the industry. They're 4.78, the average is 4.46. So to summarize, I have them trading at a 10% discount. Their ratios are okay, but they're such a big company so they could handle getting through any difficult time. The third and final company is Trans Alta Renewables. This is a Canadian company. This company owns and operates the following business segments, Canadian Wind, Canadian Hydroelectric, and Canadian Gas. This company trades in the Toronto Stock Exchange. Let's get started with the model. The market cap is 4.2 billion Canadian dollars. They're a mid cap company. They're trading at $16 a share. And they have consistent positive free cash flow every year that looks great the net income is a little bumpy it's negative one year but then it's positive the next three years it's kind of low in 2017 but it looks pretty good in 2018 and 2019 their revenue grows a lot from 2016 to 2017 then it's pretty steady from there on out they have 939 million dollars of debt they pay 4.4 percent interest on their debt the cost of debt is 3.6% and they only have 29% debt in their capital structure, 71% equity. And to get the cost of equity, we need the beta. That's how volatile a stock is relative to the market. And that beta is 0.73, so the stock moves less than a market, so it's not volatile at all. The cost of equity is 7.9% and their WAC is 6.67% which is a blend of the cost of debt and cost of equity and that's a discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. So we estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated terminal value which is all cash flows past year four that's 6.2 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of 6.2 billion dollars. We divide that by 261 million shares we got a calculated stock price of $24. They're trading at $16, so they're trading at a 33% discount. It's a buy, a strong buy, according to the model. Let's see what Simply Wall Street says. They're at $23, so almost exactly what I say. Let's see where the stock has been trading at the past few years. So it looks like it's been up and down, and it peaked right before coronavirus at around $18. Then it's come down quite a bit. It's come up a little but it looks like it still has a lot of room to grow. Let's look at the financial ratios. A weak price to earnings, a really weak price to sales, and a good price to book. PE is stock price of earnings per share. I like to see below 15, they're at 23.5. Price of sales is stock price of a sales per share. I like to see below 2.5, they're at 9.4. Price to book is stock price of a book value per share. I like to see below 3.5, they're at 1.9. Good current ratio, good interest coverage ratio, and a weak ROE. Current ratio is current assets over current liabilities, so they can easily cover their current debts and payables. I like to see between 1.2 and 2, they're at 1.9. ROE is net income over equity. I like to see above 20%, they're only at 8%. Interest coverage ratio is EBIT over interest expense. I like to see above 2.0, they're at 3.1, so they can easily cover their interest payments. And the best way to look at ratios is to compare them to similar companies. I've done videos on Algonquin, Brookfield Renewables, Northland Power, and Sky Solar, all in the same industry as TransAlta. If TransAlta has a number in green, they're better than the average. If they're in red, they're worse than the average. So they are better than the average in PE because the average is negative. Two companies have a negative PE because they have negative earnings. Price of sales, they're worse than the average. They have the worst price of sales. They are much better in price to book at 1.9. The average is 2.9. They're better than the average in current ratio. They have the highest current ratio. All the other companies are below one. So the other companies cannot cover their current liabilities. ROE, they are better than the average since the average is negative. They have the lowest amount of debt of all the companies. 
For market cap, they're lower than the average at 2.4 billion US dollars. I converted this to US dollars. Same thing for Northland Power. They do pay the highest dividend yield in their industry, a whopping 6%. The average is 3.5%. To summarize, I have them trading at a 33% discount. Their ratios look really good. They have the lowest amount of debt and they pay the highest dividend yield. Let me know what you think of the video. Leave a comment. I reply to all comments. Subscribe if you want to see me value more companies. Thanks for watching.